fact that we are alike, um, we are not different, and that we all have these moments where everything changes and where our manhood is determined. It's 7 o'clock and uh, I'm in the parking lot, visitor's parking lot at Sing Sing Correctional Institution. Um, I have to say I have a softball in my stomach. I'm scared shit. I've been looking up at the uh, guard towers and, uh, and I've just been uh, thinking a lot about what this all means. Um, it's a beautiful morning here. There's uh, fog out over the river, over the Hudson River. Um, if I weren't looking at a prison, I think it's kind of picturesque, um, but I'm not. I'm going into a prison right now. Um, <clears throat> you know, everything I've been doing has led up to this point, and uh, I was saying the other day that um, part of the definition of, of being a good man to me is uh, when you are afraid, not lying about it, not running away from it, but actually facing it directly. Um, you know, I'm very afraid right now, um, but I'm not going to run away. I I'm going to actually walk through those gates and try and bring some message of hope. Uh, to those guys, and even if I can't speak um, for whatever reason, just because because um, my fear overcomes me, I, I feel that my only, you know, my presence um, is a big statement. Uh, I've also got um, five copies of our book that I'm going to bring inside. I've been told that all I can bring is my license and those copies, which have been pre-approved to go through the gates. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. Well, so Julio, how'd I do? Fantastic, fantastic. <laughs> your brothers embrace you, uh, but I think more importantly, man, when you speak from your heart, uh, you can't go wrong, and you did that today. Yeah. And they were moved as you were moved, and, and it was clear. It was clear that something happened in that room when you see grown men cry. So thank you, Tom. Yeah. I think the you know the highlight is to know that. They count that, you know, a few good men is, uh, you know, the police officer or the, or the veteran or the, or, the, or the person serving in Iraq. They understand that they, too, are part of this mass movement to be good fathers and, and to be good men. And I think that came across very clearly today and how everyone echoed that sentiment, not only about being a father, but the turning point in their lives. I'm in the car after uh, leaving Sing Sing, after leaving Julio. Um, sun's come out. I have to say, it was one of the one of the most intense uh, experiences of my life. Um, they wouldn't let me in at first. Uh, Julio, there, the, there was a large African American woman at the gate. Who apparently, didn't like Julio, and uh, was giving him a hard time. And said I was not on the list, and I couldn't come in under no circumstances. Uh, so Julio went in alone, and then. I had to basically pull strings to get me in. I had to wait 45 minutes. Um, and then one of the chaplain uh, came down and, and got me and led me through hall after hall after hall. Um, there's 1,800 inmates at Sing Sing. Um, and there were 14 men waiting for me. Um, I walked into the room and one of them brought me a cup of coffee as I sat down. And Julio was smiling. And at that moment, my fear disappeared, and as I heard the men talk, uh, Julio actually made them go around the room and introduce themselves to say who they were, um, what their crime was, how long they were sentenced, how long they had served, and why whether they were in the theological seminary, what they hoped to get out of it, and they went around the room one at a time. Most of the men were there for life or for very long sentences. Many of the men had been, um, had served um, 15, 20, one man had served 32 years. Um, some of the men had, who had served 20, 15, 20 years looked like they were kids. They obviously had been there since they were very young. Um, they all smiled at me um, and they immediately made me feel comfortable. Um, I told my story and the story of the book connection to Julio and explained why we have all these events coming up, um, but I wanted to start the book tour with them at Sing Sing. Um, why, to me, 
it all really comes down to the fact that we are alike. Um, we are not different. And that we all have these moments where everything changes and where our manhood is determined. Um, and Julia brought, um, brought that up after I was done. I probably talked for 45 minutes and asked um, the members of the class um, to share uh, their moment. I had, I had shared about um, when I had to call my mother and explain why, um, even though I'd been on the front page of the Wall Street Journal, I had no place to go. I'd been kicked out of the house. And they went around the room and, you know, it was mind, it was honestly uh, mind blowing. I, I heard about, two men shared about the death of their mothers while they were incarcerated. Um, Julia later explained to me that you get the option of a death bed visit or a funeral. You don't get both. You have to choose. And if you choose the death bed visit, um, you go in shackles and you go with four guards, four armed guards, two on each side. So one of the men described how he was shuffling down the hall of the hospital where his mother was about to die. And the nurses were pleading with the guards to take the shackles off, and they would not. And in the end, they put a blanket over his arm so the mother wouldn't have to see the shackles. And the inmate described that his turning point was that he could not hug his mother as she died.